Google Cloud Next 2017 hosted a large number of talks detailing the future of cloud. If you didn't get a chance to catch the session, Managing Container Engine Clusters Across Multiple Teams, then stay tuned because here's the recap. As development teams embark into Kubernetes, they will inevitably need to revisit their project, cluster, and namespace organization as new teams need access or as they prepare for production into multiple environments. This brings up the ever common question of how do I configure my environment? In practice, we see three typical configurations. First is a shared project, shared cluster, and different namespace, where namespaces map to different teams. The benefit of this is that it gives you potential cost savings and proper isolation, but now resource isolation is limited to CPU and memory. The second is one project, different cluster, different namespace setup, which gives you improved resource isolation, but you might lose management benefits. Third is different project, different cluster, and different namespace, which offers greater isolation and billing control, but again, lost management benefits. But after a lot of discussions, one of the most powerful setups has to be doing a different project for production, separating dev, test, and production, along with shared clusters and different namespaces for each team. Now, once you have things isolated the way you like, you can optimize for resources offered to them to optimize your quality of service. Uh, by specifying CPU and memory limits on your containers, the scheduler can give you a different quality of service based on resource requests for your pod, uh, either uh, best effort, burstable, or guaranteed. Of course, you now run into the problem about what the resource request should be set to. Without a strong history of data, there's a big chance you're going to get these numbers wrong for a while. To help with that, Kubernetes has a feature called Initial Resources, which looks at the history of resource usage for a container and sets the request automatically based on that history. So that once you've run a container, you don't need to specify the request again in the future. The system essentially learns what the right resource request is by observing it across multiple runs. For more information about how to properly set up your Kubernetes environment, including some demos and other insights, check out the full talk on YouTube. If you're looking for more recaps on other great Next content, make sure to check out the rest of our playlist. And don't forget the Next World Tour, coming soon to a city near you.